Yo, we're back with another episode of K100 Talks. Uh, the topic this week, disco, boom. Um, I want to talk about you. Right. Uh, you just had a an experience with you've you've been now you've done stuff production stuff with WWE in the past because like I think you're on some of their videos of uh well, what what are some of the video no, content I've never they, done they, anything with them no but you were uh, on like Ray's biography Ray's biography or, yeah oh, but that's right. it that's, that's yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, that, that so you've yeah. you've worked like you've at, worked with the, the people that work at WWE is that, is that accurate not really these guys are kind of a part that was A and E that was yes, a network A&E. oh that was A and E okay oh yeah. so this is the first time so right. you're back in since since in the mid nineties like or whatever Moon it was days, right mm-hmm. Max Moon days you bet okay what is so how did like okay so how did this first of all like what we talked about on the sh- the show you kept saying I'm not confirming anything until they right r- until they reveal okay right so what was that conversation like when they told you hey don't, d- did they tell you not to say anything right they were like hey we're gonna announce Ray this Friday the that week they told me he goes <clears throat> we're gonna announce you a couple of days later you know just don't say anything and I right, was like, all okay. right then I won't okay. <clears throat> and you didn't say anything on this and then they finally right. announced it right okay yeah so you you were true to you you did you did your part. Right. You, right. Um, okay. So then they pick. They they they're going to take you to the uh, Hall of Fame. Now, did you and Ray like were like what, what were your what were the conversations like? You know, leading up to like okay, now and now you're finally going to you go. They're they're picking you up in a car and they're driving you to L.A. for the uh, for the Hall of Fame on Thursday. Well, what what conversations did you and Ray have? Did you like? No, I was just like, telling him. I was just telling him because I had written my. Uh, speech like really three days before because I was really really busy I was hoping to the way I work is um, I can talk right off the top of my head because that's what we do on the podcast Mm -hmm. but like when I do a promo usually I've gone over it in my head a couple times yeah I like to memorize it so I can own it because that's what something that I learned from actors that you know when you memorize your lines you're not thinking about them so you can do other stuff and you're not just like trying to remember the lines and you're kind of like one dimensional you know what i'm saying right does that make sense it makes perfect sense yeah. right so uh so when i they actually gave me a speech writer and i want to shout out this guy brian yang he was incredible he was very professional he was very accommodating okay well, you're, getting, you're getting you're getting you're getting ahead you're getting ahead right right i, I want to walk through until right right, right. so so i'm getting uh, so that I'll, I'll go okay. back. I just wanted to mention him real quick. So okay, so 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 you right. get picked up in the car, the car. You right. get taken to L.A. Right. You're, you're obviously at the wrestler's hotel. Right. Did you meet like when you got when you were checking in and stuff? Did you see like like any of the boys there? Or anything? Yeah. When like, I, so like, I'll get to that in a second, but let me go back. Okay. So I had written out three days before what I wanted to say, and they were like, "Oh, we need to see your whatever it is you're gonna say." And bro, I had like a seven minute thing. And they were like, oh, you only have three minutes. And I go, bro, there's no way I can Mm -hmm. properly represent this legend in three minutes, you know? And so the guy goes, well, let me see if I can get you five. And I was thinking to myself, all right, give me five because I'm going to take seven. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Once you (laughs) You go over here. Yeah, I'm not. not, And they're not going to complain. Well, here's my thing was if I get heat, I get heat. I don't give a you know, right, you don't my, work my there, whole right. thing is I'm going to properly introduce my boy. You right. Know? Okay. All right. So they yeah. pick you up in the car. They take you there. You get out the hotel. And right. they, did you see anybody? Like, right. The first any- guy that I saw was, believe it or not, Johnny Gargano. He was standing next to me uh-huh. and uh, he did not say hi to me. And uh, right. Mm-hmm. And um, which I kind of expected. And okay. so then I run into Mick Foley, mm-hmm. who's always very nice. Okay. So, so, okay, so here's the thing. It's got to be a weight on your mind that, like, okay, they're bringing me in here, but like, I got the podcast, right? And I've been critical of a lot of these right. guys, but I've been praised a lot of these guys, so I'm just wondering which of these guys are going to be right. Well, that have, I've the had ones that don't say critical hi. Of, right, right, exactly. Okay, cool. Right. So, what was, rare, what was that like? Very rare will somebody come up to you and go, "Hey, I heard what you said. It has happened." But right. you know, and I'll give you an example. Got- Mo, there, there are some guys that have come up to me and they would, "Why do you say that?" Or you know, but uh, it's kind of funny because one of the guys that you know, actually called me out one day in Nashville, which was Seamus. Mm -hmm. I actually told them before we ran into each other. I forgot where, but but, but this was before the speech because after the speech, he had very nice words to say. But I I said, uh, hey, man, I just want to tell you, I know that you got the last time you saw me, you were hot uh, because I was criticizing your work. I want to say that right now you're one of my favorite guys to watch, which is entertaining. You're good. You're over. You're physical, you know, and I just put him over. 
you know and he goes right. oh man thanks a lot you know you used to be one of my favorite wrestlers and you know he was very very nice but anyways but uh right. that was that was okay. a little running we had with uh the the uh irish ginger okay. <laughs> okay cool so now so now you go to the hotel like okay there the me you brought in a couple guys, but now you got to go to the right. show. So right. when you're at the Hall of, so you had to go to it's a SmackDown. So the show was after SmackDown, right. right? Right. Oh, so you're back. What time did you get there? Did you get the same call time as everybody else? Yeah, we got there really early because at ten thirty they had a ten thirty in the morning, the day of. Uh -huh. They actually had like a walkthrough. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. I had to go so, through, through that walk. I got right. so you go the walk Okay, so you go you go there. Now you're in the locker room with everybody. And like, somebody knows, you know, you, it's like, so now well, it's Ray like. Ray has his own locker room. Okay, you're. Ray has his own. Oh, Ray? So I'm in so, the locker okay, room. Okay, so you just hung out Ray's locker he, room? He's, he's in the locker room. And then they added the male legends. So Muda was in there. Andy Kaufman's family? Yeah, I don't know who they were, but. Yeah. Uh, the, Muda was in there. For some reason, the Steiner brothers were in there. Um, right. JBL was in. Oh, because JBL inducted some referee or something. Uh, Tim White, yeah. So he was in there with with um, Ron okay. Simmons, bro. Mm -hmm. You would love JBL because he's has a fantastic knowledge of sports, as does Ron Simmons. Yeah. Right. I want to get JBL on the Ron show. Ron Simmons yeah. a le mm -hmm. FSU legend. You're you know, right. Like, yeah. Right. All right. right. So, so, yeah. so, so, was there any? Uncomfortable moments, like like I've, I like I say, you take pictures. You had a picture with Cena. And, uh, what was your conversation like with Seth Rollins? I saw you had a, a photo well, with Seth, Seth Rollins, Rollins actually, after his match. It was right. It was actually funny because we ran into each other, and I think he forgot he had met me before, because he goes, "Hey man, I just want to tell you that um uh I don't know if you remember." And I go, "I know what you're gonna say." Oh, the LAX. Yeah, yeah that you rest yeah. that we wrestled an impact. And he goes, "Why well, didn't wrestle you?" I go, "I know I was a manager, but you wrestled LAX." He goes, "Yeah." I go, "You told me that before." <laughs> he goes, "All right." And we just shook right. hands, and I said, "I love you, right. bro." And he just, you know, he was. I don't know. He was going to an interview or something, but he was very, very nice. Did uh, did anybody mention my name? <laughs> um. I don't believe so, but I was going to call you Buglebeak okay. when I shouted you out on the monitor thing, but I said, you know mm -hmm. what? I well, that would have been, like, that would have been very disrespectful. Okay, let's go to, uh, so what did, uh, now what let's did, get to, what, so. No, go ahead, yeah. No, I was just going to ask ahead, about um, seeing uh, seeing John Cena and everything like that. What did, what did he have to say? Because uh, the old story about when you had uh, Truth kind of embellish his encounter with John and stuff. So, right. Yeah, yeah I so don't think he had you met, remembers that. Okay, what did he but, have to um, say? No, I was with with a guy that we actually had on the show who took very good care of the whole weekend is a very good friend, Spiff. Mm. He was like, have you seen the set yet? And I was like, no. And he goes, come on. And so we were opening up the curtains and we were looking at the set and this security guard was like, Oh, you can't open up the curtains. And he goes, well, I have a press pass. And he goes, yeah, how about him? Me? Cause I was hanging around with no pass. And he goes, he can't, he can't, he can't go through. And I go, I don't want to go through. I just want to look. And he goes, you can't even look. And then John Cena, I guess was on the other side. And he came through and he goes, gentlemen, he's just trying to do his job. And then um, I was like, yo, what's up? What's up? And I said, uh, can we get a pic? And he said, yeah. And we took a picture. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Interesting. That was it. So, so there were right. a lot of, uh... oh, did you meet Hunter? Yes, I did. He was very nice. What was that conversation? Put over the speech. Was, I don't, I don't um, want to get into it, but it looks like we might have another conversation. Yeah. yeah, there was a sneaky, cool. uh, well, no, it's not sneaky, but there was a Cave and Hunter listener who snapped a picture of you and Hunter talking on the stage as I guess you were walking out or whatever. Yeah, right. That's when he was. Yeah, he was yeah. like, yeah, good speech, you know, really good speech. And yeah. How about Vince? Okay, let's get to the speech. Vince looks like Johnny Depp's dad, bro. You should see this guy. He's got a mustache. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, a guy, he, he's got bro, it. And he doesn't know. Uh, it, and he's got a new mustache and he doesn't know how right. to shave it. Like he's That's shaving weird. his old mustache. It's off. Yeah, it's, it's off. It's, it's like not. <laughs> You don't have you don't have like a personal barber, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, he was. Um, I mean, like, I don't know how much you, they have uh, a bro. You know what they actually have in WWE, which I thought was hilarious. They had a barber shop hmm. with the red and white thing that goes around. You know, like if you were actually in a barber mm -hmm. shop, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, the pole, the barber. Yeah, pole. They, yeah they had a barber pole in there, and people were getting their oh, beards God. trimmed. There, he might have, she should have gone to that. Anyways, that's why. That's how. These guys had to have that metrosexual look where all their they're well groomed and stuff. Right. They're, 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 they're kind of perfect facial hair because because right. they had the barber. They're like right, right. exactly. Yeah. We talked about that years ago, right? So, yeah. uh, all right. So let's get to the speech. Um, all right, it's obvious you're reading off a teleprompter, but you did a good job of not making it obvious you're reading off a teleprompter. Now, did you write the whole speech? 
Or yeah. did they, 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 the no. writers? So if you know anything, the they edited it. Yeah. Okay. Well, here was the so thing. So you're I responsible was gonna, for the I, line. I, time out. Time out. I'm yes. gonna. I don't. I'm, let me get my in first. Okay. I'm responsible <laughs> for everything in there. <laughs> Even the joke. Ray is a scarecrow because he's yeah. outstanding in his field. That's your. That's your joke. That's a great line. It's Can you line. kazoo yourself for me? No. I want to. I want to do. I don't have a kazoo. I think that's a great okay? line. <laughs> A guy, a really? guy. The next, the next yeah, night. That was atrocious. I, I'm, I'm the next I am. Night. That yeah, sounds well, like. I disagree with you, Bonehead. Time out. That sounds like a line that Raven would use, and like Joe never would heard it. Never heard, never heard. Never heard Raven use it. Yeah. Okay, of course he hadn't used it, but like there's something, something that he would use. Terrible joke. Right. Yeah. I okay, it was your speech funny. was good. Well, here's uh, the here's the best pop- part. Here's the best part. Here's the best part. If you go back and you listen to it, which I have not even seen it yet, but I was there in real time. People popped for that line. They mm-hmm. usually don't pop for that okay. isn't funny. So I think you're I don't wrong think again. They pop. You review the tape. And no, 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 no. Pop. They... Now, all right. So you weren't supposed to say Ray Mysterio Jr. Right. You said Ray Mysterio they Jr. Right. They, they, and they've edited out the Jr. Right. When you, when do they show a clip? If you do that, which is fine. You know, for, for whatever. That's yeah. what you can do in production. But, but he is Ray Mysterio Jr. Right, that's kind of weird. It's like that's right. thing. It's Uncle like Ray you're inducted Ray Mysterio Jr. Like, right? Yeah, right. exactly. It's, Not really you know, I don't know. Right. It's like, it's, yeah. Uh, what was it like? Uh, uh, that's hanging out like with Dom. A thing. <laughs> Ray, Ray Mysterio, damn it! But um, did you? Well, how, how was Dom? Let me tell you what's weird uh, about Dom. Uh, that night, the night before, was Wally Mania, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And I was there at the very first one, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. and we didn't know how many people. We're going to show up because I, I helped Cord and Wale with that. Uh, they did most right. of the heavy lifting, though. And, and bro, it was an incredible, you know, uh, event. Two years later, I tried to get in, and I couldn't even get in because it was so full. And then some guy recognized me from Wale's camp, and he brought me in. And, dude, it felt like you were in a subway with no air, no Orlando, ventilation. Right? Orlando, right? I think was, it was Orlando. And, yeah. bro, so then I said – they go, there's a VIP room. And I go, well, bring me to that VIP room. It was even worse because it was smaller and it was just packed with all the boys. And it, and so mm-hmm. anyways, my point is, if I would have been 25 years old and there would have been a Wally Mania back when I was wrestling and it was the day before I had to wrestle, I would have gone to Wally Mania 100%. Right. And Dominic didn't go. You know, he was like, I need to concentrate. Right. I need to be ready. You know, and I su- salute him for that. So I said, it, then I'll just go downstairs and I was and I was sitting on a bench it was like two in the morning I was stoned out of my mind and I see Jeremy Borash walk up oh my and we God. just both start we both start laughing because he can't believe it's me and I can't believe it's him <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> right right and what a, like what a perfect boy. sort of right. you know, per- perfect right. guy to, to see like when you're <laughs> right right Right. There's nobody uh, around either. Right. Like there's nobody in the right. lobby. Just there's nobody you, outside. Right? Just yeah, like... just me and him. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. And, uh, yeah, that um, was great. So we had a great time. All right. So you do this you do the speech. Um I obviously the, bro, so the you know what's funny about Jeremy. You, you, the, you know what's funny about Jeremy? Because I wasn't sure uh, you know, I just wasn't sure how the speech would come out. And uh, Jeremy was like, Doesn't matter, you'll get by on just your delivery alone. That's what he t- that's what he t- and that gave me a little bit more confidence. But let me go back to the teleprompter. So when I get there, I as you know, you and me, you know, any wrestler, they memorize their promos, you know. So I'm used right. to memorizing my. So I said, let me. They said you're gonna have a teleprompter there in case. And I thought to myself, you know what? That's pretty cool. Just for whatever reason, I forget or I lose my place. I got the teleprompter. You know what I'm saying? And um, but and then plus plus it's like it's like karaoke. You know no. the words to the song, but it's just right. very more. You have more confidence and clarity when you're you're reading the, the, right. the screen. Good, you know, yeah, good, good right. analogy. Yeah, right. So you got the tele the tele- Go ahead. Uh, so yeah, you know. So I just used the teleprompter just to see where I was, but I really didn't. It was mostly off the top of my head because I already had it. We had a lot of body language. To, to, yeah. You had a lot of body language that kind of like told that like you weren't reading the teleprompter, even though everybody could see you reading. Right. So like, that was good. Right. Um, so, I, so so the speech uh, got rave reviews. I'm not sure that right. was accurate. Um, right. but everybody says the best one, the the best induction speech ever. Definitely debatable in my book. Um, right. So what was what it like when you came back to the curtain afterwards? What is the best induction speech in your book? 
I'll have to I'll have to review the tapes, but we'll, we'll make it. Did you see Ric later. Flair and Doctor so, the Great Moose? Sure. That was phenomenal. I heard. <laughs> well, I was uh, I was backstage. I was next, so I was oh. I had to see. Okay, so when you came when going. you came when you came back through the curtain, what was the reaction, bro? Before I went through the curtain, bro, they had all the wrestlers on this stage, right, and the family, right. So when I came up, the first two people that were there was Cody and Triple H. Mm -hmm. And they were the first ones. They were like, oh, great speech. That was really good. I felt it. And, you know, Montez Ford and Natalie Neidhart. And it was a lot of people just Mm -hmm. came up. And they were like, I was thinking to myself. And I swear when I say this, I was like, I just gave a speech, you know. But they were like, oh, I got goosebumps. Kevin Cross really put it over. You know, he was like phenomenal, bro. I felt that, you know, and that's what a lot of people say that they felt it. Yes. So I'm glad that they did because it was a, it was a, it was like a love letter to my boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I love what you've done. Plus, he's he's in a, he's in a not. He's like he's like he was like the first guy that got in the Hall of Fame that was like a complete anomaly in the business. Right. There's no way a guy like that size. Right. 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 There's no way like you look at a guy that size and say like that that guy. Right. Here's the funny part. I purposely asked him to put that picture of him when he was 150 pounds. It didn't even look like and I, it. it didn't even and look I said, like, right? <laughs> right. And I said, this is what I had to work with. You think this was an easy <laughs> right. sell? Just so the people right. could understand what I had to sell. You know what I'm saying? And, right. But anyways, it's right. great to see where he's at, bro. He's, as you know, you're really good friends. We're all three of us are really good friends. Norman Smiley's another brother. You know, we're like really, really tight. Right. And you know how beautiful he is and he deserves everything he got. You know, did you see uh, Filthy That's Pet? Cool. Is he still there? Was he I did see Filthy Pet, and yeah. I did call him Filthy Pet. <laughs> he was he was stuffing his face with something, and somebody goes, "Hey, it's Cody," <laughs> and, and I go, "Filthy Pet." You know, you know who looks really still very stunning, Stacy Keebler. Who? Mm-hmm. She did, yeah. Yo, she looks great, and yeah. so does Tori Wilson. She hasn't, and she, hasn't, she hasn't aged. She hasn't aged a day. It seems no. like. Little she bit, did it, George Clooney and great. stuff. It's like, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, right. So. Yeah, but she's still Isn't that funny? very thin. She did it. She did it, George Clooney, and Tori right. dated Alex Rodriguez. Right. It's yeah, like yeah. You know, it's like it's like two and, friends of ours in the wrestling business still, dated like a listers. Like, you know. but here's the best part, bro. Unlike other females, they're very, very humble. You know, they're still sweet right. and nice, and they're not like you know. They were very. They were both very nice. Did but you see Stacey's? I got to see Filthy Pat, which I loved. <laughs> did both of you guys? Because uh, I don't know if you're getting prepped or whatever, Conan. Did you see Stacy's speech? Who? Stacy Keebler. Her speech. Did I hear her speech? Yeah, yeah, it was backstage. I yeah. always thought it was funny because her story was true, where she was like, "I was a fan first, and they showed pictures of her in the crowd or whatever. Yeah. Right. It seemed like she won every time in a fan every, contest. Right. But before that, every time WCW was in Baltimore. Whoever was in charge of production, whatever, must have been like, there's a hot girl in the crowd. Let's get her. Every time they were there, Stacy was in the crowd dancing with a wolf pack shirt on or whatever. Right. And course, yeah, you can do a lot of She even tried out. She was a fan. Yeah. 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 And That's plus, so let's, and she was from so, Baltimore, so too. Right. 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 Yeah. So let's rate your experience on the Dave Meltzer star rating scale. How, well, would, how me, did you, how would you, yeah, I don't, I don't rate stars. I just mm-hmm. tell you I had an excellent time. Well, I'm going to ask you to rate. I was, I'm aware of that, but if we were, right. If we're rating if it by I, stars, how would you rate it? Five stars. And five you stayed stars. through the first night of WrestleMania, right? You went home right. Sunday morning. Oh, so you right. were you you were backstage right. for the day, night one, right? Right. Right. Let me tell you the. Did you, funnest, did you go over? This, let me ask you a question. Let, let me right. ask a question. Did you help produce Ray versus Dom? No. That sounds like a yes. Um, you, you're lying. You're an absolute <laughs> But let me liar. tell you. Let Bro, me, come let on. Me tell you, you obviously let, had a hand in that. <laughs> so let me, let me just tell admit you it that you may have had a, 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 whatever percentage is a percentage of input yeah. into that match. Maybe like an unofficial capacity. <laughs> come on, yeah. Let me oh, tell come you on. something. Let right. me tell you something. Uh, this was one of my highlights. So I'm in the, I'm in the back, right? And I see they're mm-hmm. hiding some guy because they don't want anybody to see him. And he just goes this and he takes off his cape and it's pat mcafee and he goes i'm not right. going to pass by the og and not say hi nah. he goes hey what's up corner okay How but do you answer that i disagree yeah. I, I need evidence i need visual That's evidence great. that he well, said he'll that. be on the show and you i can think ask you mark- yourself so so i think you marked out I, for him i didn't I even know who he, him, i didn't even know who he was he was under a, like a hood or something and he took it off right and so anyways and i said hey uh 
I go, some oh, Spiff, my boy Spiff was the first one. He goes, why don't you go on his podcast? He goes, I'd love to. He goes, why don't you have him on your podcast? He goes, you're invited whenever you That'd want. Great. I go, all right, well, give me your phone number. And so we changed numbers. He gave it to me. Obviously, I haven't called him yet, but he will be on right. the show soon. Great. Yeah. And That's plus, cool. this is it. we have a mutual connection. Him, him and Madden are very tight. So, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm. And he, and oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah. And he, yeah. you can tell he's a big wrestling fan, which will be fun. Course, you know, and we're football course, yeah. fans, so we'll be able to, yeah, yeah that'll be good. Yeah, yeah. It'll be sports, and, sports and wrestling with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was really cool bumping into him. Um, uh, you know, all I can say it was very organized, very professional, a lot of respect, a lot of, you know, um, uh, uh, watching the Charlotte Rhea match live. I really like that match. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was just, you know, what can you say? It was a great experience, you know. Let me ask I you saw a Scott Tuggle Did anybody... Moore there too. <laughs> he was nice. there backstage. At... He was Wait, staying. No, no, no. He was staying at the he same was hotel. Probably WrestleCon. Oh, same know. hotel, right? Yeah. He was staying. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's so, so you were hobnobbing with all the all the big wigs and all the major Everybody. companies, huh? You been you been you went and saw Tony ran, Khan a couple weeks ago. Into... You, yeah. you ran into Scott Demore, the president of Impact. Right. You were with Triple H, right. and you know, so yeah. The, yeah. In the last few weeks, Di. So so did was there any did any did you have be honest here? Were there yeah. any times of discomfort that people made you uncomfortable, or did you were you comfortable the entire time? No, I I think the the you know who was very nice too, even though I bury her her team Bailey uh -huh. Bailey really hmm. yeah she came up and she was like hey what's up and I, hey what's up I I go have I met you before she goes yeah I think a long time ago and I go I don't really remember but you know um I love your work I was gonna say you could do without damage control but I'm sure she's heard my <laughs> right. comments because other people <laughs> right. yeah because damage control did not talk to me just so you know we were actually standing oh, they didn't. Each other right. watching the monitor and yeah, then right, they like, didn't say right they didn't she didn't introduce they don't which is kind of like you can tell like this generation of wrestlers they right. kind of get offended when they hear criticism right. that right. even when they're with like an elder and like, right. you would, you would think like, I would always be taught, <laughs> introduce right. myself. Hey, right. much, but they didn't even like, now they, right. and, they, and I, of course they knew who you were. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's that type of attitude this generation has. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. But, um, like right. I said, right. uh, let me see if there's any other highlights to throw at you. Um, uh, oh bro. I just gotta, I really do have to say this X Pac, he was incredible, bro. You should see him, uh, Disco. He's, I'm He's not taking married. him off the Disco list. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not asking taking him take off the Disco list. All right. All right. That's fair enough. But he's married. Yeah. I think his wife writes for the number one show on Netflix. I forgot the name of it. And, uh, and bro, he looked great. He was lucid. He was sharp. You can tell he's not using anything. This is the best, mm -hmm. the happiest I've ever seen him Good. because he's always well, been if you follow him on Twitter, long. And, you know, you know he, just, he just lost his, he just yeah. lost his dog too, which I mean, yeah. real Lula. Recently, like yeah, yeah. Last week. Yeah. 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 So and bro, just, I'll just, just tell you because X-Pac, he, he, he really helped me through some dark times in TNA in Mexico and I'll always have love and respect for him and he took care of me this week because I was all tired and, and he took care of me. So thank you, Sean. I love you, bro. There was uh, I just wanted to read this to you real quick because I'm sure you already know this, Conan, but this is from this was from Fightful. It says uh, Fightful Select reports that Conan's speech inducting Ray Mysterio was, quote, very well received by the company, while Ric Flair's speech inducting the Great Muda had the, quote, opposite reaction. So, okay, well, that, Joe, that Sean Joe, Joe, yeah. Joe, yeah. Joe, 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 Joe. Yes, sir. Yeah. Conan was actually backstage. <laughs> right. Okay, and you're reporting on something from a guy that, like, wasn't backstage and was reporting on stuff that Coney would would know because he was actually there backstage. Right, but what I'm I want to get I'm trying to uh, induce Conan. Conan to talk about the, is that the report accurate? A little bit and see <laughs> see what happens. I don't know. I didn't hear. I didn't. I didn't hear anything about Ric Flair. I did hear nothing but 100 percent from the company and from the boys about the speech. Like they right. really liked it, and I was surprised because I didn't think it was nothing special. It was just me putting over my boy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was. And, I, and, and let me tell you, this well, is, I'm going to tell you something, which is, I didn't think it was very you, I know you didn't I like it. Two, I know, I know. But let me tell I give you something. A two, I give it two and a quarter stars on Twitter. All right. But let me tell you something. <laughs> because I remember when I, because I was kind of feeling the same way. Ray, the night before, he goes, man, I'm a little bit nervous, but I shouldn't be nervous because I've been in WrestleMania before. I've been a champion. It's with my son. It should be easy. And he like, get, I got to break that mindset. And I was thinking, and I don't know, I guess this is a, a part of me that doesn't allow me to get cocky. 
uh, I was like, bro, I'm going to have to go out there. I haven't been in WWE in more than 20 years in front of these guys that talk for a living now. You know, you know, Booker T was there and Hunter and all these people. And I go, bro, mm-hmm. I just hope I don't fuck up. You know, that was my only worry. And so I went out right. there. And then when I read the but reviews, you were nervous. Was, you were nervous because you... The day you had your written speech on the teleprompter, so I'm sure you're not nervous at all. Yeah, right? but that that that, that probably that, put you that, in a good. But I knew, yeah. but but I knew I wasn't gonna need it, you know, because it's not a tool that I really need. So uh, it was more, right. yeah, I did look at it, but I was it was really off, you know, it was off my memory, you know. But um, right. uh, um, but yeah, I did get a little, and then I thought to myself the same thing Ray did. I thought, well, I've done millions of promos in in really. 10 situations and 10 and I know I'll be able to do this, you know, and then I just had to psych myself out, refocus and then go out there and do, and do it. So I'm glad, you know, that I didn't flub any words or anything like that. And it was a really unique spot too, because I mean, how often do they usually use someone for, especially in the main event speech is what it was. That's, that's not in the company or hasn't been in the company in years. Like you were in a very unique spot where they, they trust, you know, I'm going to be very honest, Joe. Yeah. This that's what's funny about when they go, oh, it's one of the best speeches in all this, mm-hmm. bro. I don't remember any speeches. I very rarely even what I, I, you know, the only induction speech that I remember is maybe when the the Colognes inducted their dad. Yeah, that's like the only one I remember. But I've never watched inductees. I've never really watched any. I really didn't. I didn't even really know the Hall of Fame that much because I really didn't watch many of their shows. So I didn't know what to expect. You know, mm-hmm. I just yeah. But yeah, I'd say you, unanimous praise. I saw on social media some people that I talked to also the same thing. Like put it over. Big yeah, time. bro, I got it was I great, got, dude. It was I got great. yeah, I got love from everywhere. Yep. But anyways, that was my experience. I would rate it five stars on the Meltzer Star System. I would rate it excellent on the Conan System. A lot of respect. A lot of the younger cats they did know my my career and showed love. Um, and I felt welcomed when I was there. Yeah. All right. Well, that's been our uh, K100 talks this week. For the record, um. I respect Conan. Uh, uh, what, what he did was incredible, but I give it two and a quarter stars. <laughs> That's awesome. tremendous. Why not two stars? <laughs> what was the extra quarter? <laughs> two and a quarter. Because the people, the people liked it. That was hilarious. Because I don't. I usually when when I'm when I'm busy, Joe. Mm-hmm. I don't. I get off of Twitter. I don't even read it. I don't put anything on it. So, but all of a sudden, for some reason, it went ding, and I looked at it, and it was disco bearing me and i was i just popped <laughs> yeah yeah i like yeah I, I think i tweeted that and put like unbelievable or something because what'd you say di like i i think it was too long or whatever yeah well, <laughs> no, i told I conan like, I that i would yeah. bury it regardless so he said i would expect yeah. nothing less right, right. so that's well, of course right, so. of course well, i don't expect you to put it over <laughs> but anyways that's been k100 right. talks if you got any comments or anything like that about the speech or any other topics that we embark on Boom. Please hit us up at k100questions at gmail.com. Keep the letters short so we can read a grip of them. Boom. Yo, what up? This is Conan, and I host Keeping It 100, my co-host, Disco Inferno, unfortunately. Well, I'd say you're my co-host. Listen, every Thursday here on Spreaker, we talk pro wrestling, sports, movies, music, TV, pop culture, and some politics. It's everything the rest of the pro wrestling podcasts are not. Tune in to hear myself, the superior one, educate and inform. Tune in to hear me bury disco. That's very disrespectful. Join us every Thursday on Spreaker and keep it 100. Boom!